the sphere of silence. There are on many occasions that the question has been raised to me as to why I named the book the sphere of silence as opposed to a hundred other variations of this. The reason why it is called the sphere is because I imagine this practice of the sphere of silence, otherwise known as mauna, is to be something that one carries out every day, but that one carries with you wherever you are, whatever you do, whenever it is always constantly like a sphere around you. It is a place in your mind projected from within you. It is in essence a shield, an armor, and it buffers you from the day-to-day -day grind of life, of the daily existence. Hence, I refer to it as the sphere. The practice of this sphere is mauna, or otherwise known as mauna yoga. The sphere of silence needs to be practiced every day. Mauna is like breathing. It's something that you don't plan to do, but you cannot do without. As you get up in the morning, you get up into a state of mauna. It's not necessary for you to initiate a time or a sequence. As you get up, you are already into mauna. As you sit down to prepare and plan, your mauna continues. The mauna itself is as I have drawn it up in the book, a sequence, a very simple sequence and yet intense in its simplicity. The practice of the sphere of silence begins, first of all, with the analysis of yesterday. The first 10 minutes is given towards the analysis of yesterday. Why analyze yesterday? Because yesterday is the last step of your long journey in life. Yesterday is the last time that you have basically made a mistake or need to correct one. Yesterday is the clearest part of your life. Yesterday it should be the first page of your correction process. Hence, you begin by analyzing yesterday, breaking it down into the components of what you had intended to do, which being the first stage, what you actually did achieve, and why you missed out on those that you did not. Overall, you need to be looking at an analysis of how much you are able to achieve in a day and how much you're missing out. And therefore, becoming more practical in realizing how you need to plan tomorrow. Because yesterday's greatest purpose is tomorrow. Yesterday's greatest strength lies in what we can plan for tomorrow. So we squeeze out of yesterday everything, every mistake, every thought process, everything that resulted in yesterday being what it is and how we can improve upon that template. But what it cannot be is an act of despondency. It cannot be a depressive, recessive activity of us looking back and saying, what the hell went wrong and sinking into that doom and gloom. What is meant to be is a technical exercise. Why did I do this? How can I improve? Why should I improve? And that is the first 10 minutes. The next 10 minutes talks essentially about what you need to do today. Because this is essential for the day that you are about to embark upon. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is yet to happen, but today this moment is in your hands. This moment is when you strike. This moment is when the iron is hot. And this moment is what you need to plan for. So today is where you sit down, squeezing out the essence of wisdom that you have gained from yesterday and the analysis. And you start planning today, more practically, more reasonably, more intelligently. The last segment the last 10 minutes of the first 30 minutes is dedicated not just for tomorrow but for the future. Meaning it is the 24 hours beginning from midnight as well as the next 12 months, the next one year if possible and it should be a synonymous activity. You plan for the next 24 hours and that 
should be in line with what you need to do tomorrow. But as you're doing that, you should be focusing on the more important aspects of your life. Up to now, you have looked at the critical aspects of your life. The critical aspects are the ones that you need to achieve every day. But the important aspects are the ones that are interwoven into the critical. The next 12 months of your life are important as opposed to critical. Anything that you're planning for the next 12 months is interwoven into the rest of your life. So these important things, the things that you need to achieve, the wisdom that you wish to gain, the targets that you need to achieve in these next 12 months are the ones that will be your legacy. And you need to spend this critical 10 minutes into planning your legacy, into what you wish to leave behind for the person that you have lived and the person that you are going to be remembered by. And this would end the first 30 minutes. The next 30 minutes basically begins with 15 minutes of reading. The single most powerful thing you could do, reading is not a necessity, it is far more than that. It is like breathing. You stop reading, you have stopped living. Ultimately, there is nothing as powerful as a book that can take you into another's mind. You can walk into the minds of people who have left this planet centuries ago. You could walk into the minds of people that you will never meet, never hope to meet, and yet you can walk away with their innermost thoughts, their innermost philosophy, and the font of their imagination, and make it part of your own. This is that single paradigm that changes who you are. Reading is absolutely critical. If you do not choose to read, you do not choose to grow. And if you do not choose to grow, you have begun to move backwards in life. So the next 15 minutes, you sit down to read. But not just to read. Reading with an intention to understand. Reading with an intention to carry forward into your memory process what you are reading. So the next 15 minutes need to be read first. And as you are reading, you need to be making notes. Now, as you complete this 15 minutes, you close the book, close your notes. Then you start writing what you should have remembered. And you will find towards the end of this process that some of the most important things that you should have remembered have been left behind. And this is part of the mind. This is part of the process that the mind plays on you. And you need to get past that. Short-term memory is the single most powerful tool in your armory. Short-term memory, it is simply like a machine gun. When you step up on stage, it is short-term memory that's going to make the difference between what you're speaking about and what you are intending to convey. And hence, when you go through this process, 15 minutes of reading, 5 minutes of analysis and remembering, you will have started the font of a summary. And this summary, as you progress through the book, will leave you with the essence of the book after you have finished it. Now, the essence itself may not be as critical as the essence that it leaves behind in your mind, the footprint of which you will keep going back into over and over again. The last 10 minutes of the 60-minute process is to me probably the most important. Note that I use the word important and not critical. Important because this affects the rest of your life. It affects the way you live your life. It affects life itself. I call it conversation with God. It's a conversation in which you are not going to get any answers, nor should you expect any answers, not at least in the physical form. But answers will come to you. It will come to you as better questions. It will come to you in the way you live your life. It will come to you in the course of your life. 
as you stumble and fall, the fall itself will reveal answers to you because in this process, you are going to be opening yourself up to that almighty being, the one who governs every second of our existence, the one who governs the way we walk and the way we fall. And in each and everything that he does, there is purpose. We might make mistakes, but there are no mistakes in the master plan. And because there are no flaws in the master plan, every single purpose, every single challenge, every single encounter, incident, pain, pleasure that we encounter in life has a message. So in the conversations in, with God or the conversations with the Lord, you are probing, questioning, challenging, inviting him into your being. Now, for those of you who choose not to believe in the Lord, let it be a conversation with oneself. Because you need to be completely honest. Is that one moment in time that you need to be completely honest? Honest enough to go behind your thought. You have to be the thinker behind the thought. You have to step behind your thought process and say, why am I thinking like this? Did I want to think like this? You have to question your thought itself. And this 10 minutes will eventually lead to something called meditation at some point in your life. But that is a whole different journey. This journey by itself ends with this last 10 minutes. This 60 minutes will allow you to take back the remaining 20, 23 hours in a day. This 60 minutes will take back control. This 60 minutes will give you back control. This 60 minutes will redefine who you are. This 60 minutes will give your life back to you. Mauna is not about living life. It is about living life with purpose. And may your path ahead, may our paths ahead come together in finding purpose, in finding our purpose for being in this planet. May the Lord guide your every step.